हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ज्ञान संपदा इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लास वी डेल्ट विद द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट ऑफ रिलैक्सेशन फिनोमिना अंडर विच वी अंडरस्टूड देर आर मेनली टू टाइप्स ऑफ रिलैक्सेशन फिनोमिना वन इज स्पिन लैटिस रिलैक्सेशन वर एज अनदर वन इज स्पिन स्पिन रिलैक्सेशन एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डील विथ स्पिन लैटिस रिलैक्सेशन so what actually is spin lattice relaxation what are the different parameters involved to understand this phenomena the characteristic equation as well as the different cases with graphical representation and if we look at the heading we know what actually is relaxation and spin lattice relaxation means there is a interaction between the spin system as well as the lattice and simply we can understand the interaction between the spin system and lattice is finally leading us to the equilibrium state after certain time which is called as spin lattice relaxation time denoted as tau 1 which we have already seen in our previous class so our main aim is to derive the phenomenological equation corresponding to spin lattice relaxation so let's start our today's class as such spin lattice relaxation was first developed by gotter and cronick and these two are the very well known names in the field of magnetism for developing this phenomena they studied about the sample using relatively large static field which was applied parallel to the alternating field with a frequency which is of lower order so we know if magnetic resonance has to take place means the spin system has to be exposed to a static field as well as alternating field and the earlier studies done by these two people was again similar that is the sample was taken and a large static field was applied parallel to the alternating field and the frequency of alternating field was low so corresponding to that field absorption is going to take place and the main criteria for spin lattice relaxation is the field that is h should be very much greater than hi so in detail we have understood what happens under this condition in our previous class if you have not gone through it just check it out in the playlist section of magnetic resonance so h very much greater than hi is nothing but the applied static field h is very much greater than the fluctuating internal fields which are produced by the dipoles and this is a brief introduction or condition for spin lattice relaxation to take place and now let us move on to the important part of today's class which is the derivation of spin lattice relaxation and in order to derive the relation that is the relation relating to the rate of change of magnetization involving the spin lattice relaxation time term so for that we need to consider a system of n number of spins with spin equal to half which will have only two energy levels so the simplest system we are going to consider where only two energy levels with energy e1 and e2 are involved and each energy level is having its own population and let n1 be the population of upper level before equilibrium and n2 be the population of the lower level before equilibrium similarly any system which is not under equilibrium tries to get back to equilibrium so after equilibrium let capital n1 be the equilibrium population of upper level and capital n2 be the equilibrium population of lower energy level so when a magnetic field h is applied we know that levels will be separated by an energy equal to g mu b h that is the effect of static magnetic field where g is the generalized splitting factor mu b is the bohr magneton and h is the 
applied static field. One thing to remember is that even at equilibrium there is certain probability of transition which is occurring between the states and in order to preserve the equilibrium balancing of transitions must occur so that n1 p12 is equals to n2 p21 which is called as equation number 1 where p12 is the probability for single transition per second from level 1 to level 2 whereas p21 is the probability for single transition per second from level 2 to level 1 that is in upward direction and if we define the transition as tau 1 2 is equals to 1 by p 1 2 and tau 2 1 is equals to 1 by p 2 1 that is in terms of relaxation times and also make use of Boltzmann formula we get n 2 by n 1 is equals to p 1 2 by p 2 1 that is from equation number 1 n2 by n1 will be equal to p12 by p21 and when you use this definition of transition then p12 is nothing but 1 by tau12 and p21 is 1 by tau21 so it can be written in this form and when we are using the Boltzmann formula we know that the ratio of their populations corresponding to the energy levels will be equal to exponential of energy difference divided by kbt which we have discussed in our introduction class of relaxation phenomena. So here energy difference is nothing but g mu b h divided by kt where k is the Boltzmann constant and in general we define Boltzmann distribution function as n is equals to e raised to e by kbt. So the ratios can be written in this form. So here starting from the balancing condition to defining the transition and making use of Boltzmann formula we have arrived at the relation where the population of the energy level is related to the temperature or even you can say the energy difference. So if we are having the condition where energy difference is very much less when compared to kT that is at higher temperatures we can say that n2 by n1 which is equals to exponential of g mu b h by k b t is equal to 1 plus g mu b h by k b t because we know e raised to x is approximately equal to 1 plus x when x is very much less than 1. The same condition we have applied and named it as equation number 2 and as such the total population is nothing but n1 plus n2 even we can say capital n1 plus n2 or else small n1 plus n2 because we are not adding any extra atom to the system. So before equilibrium and after equilibrium population is going to remain as it is. So in order to understand about relaxation we need to consider before equilibrium and after equilibrium what is the condition of the system. So for that now let us consider the same system before equilibrium and we have before equilibrium n1 is the instantaneous population of upper energy level and n2 is the instantaneous population of lower energy level and to approach and reach the equilibrium distributions transitions from upper level to lower energy level must occur more often than the transition from lower level to upper level because here lower level is something like a ground state whereas this one is an excited state and generally we say the system is stable when population in ground state is more when compared to the excited state so that is in general the same thing we can relate it here so downward transition is more when compared to upward transition in order to gain equilibrium distribution. So assuming that the probability for the transition is independent of level populations then we can write dn2 by dt is equals to minus dn1 by dt that is rate of change of n2 
will be equal to minus of rate of change of n1. So your negative sign means if the population increases in one energy level then it is going to decrease in another level and vice versa. And the same thing can be written as n1 by tau 1 to minus n2 by tau 2 1 which we call it as equation number 3. So this is again based on the previous equations itself where tau 1 to is equals to 1 by p 1 to and also we know that if capital N1 into P12 is equals to capital N2 into P21, even we can write small n1 into P12 is equals to small n2 into P21. By using the same balancing condition, we can derive this equation number 3. And this equation number 3 can also be written as dn2 by dt is equals to n1 plus n2 by 2 into 1 by tau 1 2 plus 1 by tau 2 1 into this factor. So when you simplify it back, you are going to get back the same equation. And also we have n1 plus n2 is equals to capital N1 plus n2 is equals to capital N that is the total number of spins. And using that equation we can simplify this bracketed term as n1 plus n2 written as n, second bracket is kept as it is and this term is nothing but n2 minus n1 divided by n1 plus n2. Again small n1 plus small n2 will be equal to capital N1 plus capital N2 that is the population before equilibrium and population after equilibrium. So total is going to be equal and if we simplify it we can observe that the denominator is same which is nothing but capital N. So N and N will get cancelled. We are remaining with 1 by 2 into the inverse of tau into N2 minus N1 minus small n2 minus small n1 which is the rate of change of N2 which is instantaneous population of energy level 2 that is the lower energy level and we are calling it as equation number 4. One thing to remember is we are dealing with magnetism means we need to bring some terms of magnetization, magnetic field, magnetic moment as well as susceptibility. Till now we have just applied the magnetic field, got the energy level separated by certain amount and based on the probability we are defining dn2 by dt or dn1 by dt. And now for the magnetic system we are going to consider the net moment of the system which is the difference between the projections of the moments of the two energy states. So we can define m0 as half g mu b into n2 minus n1 whereas mz as half g mu b into small n2 minus small n1. So m0 corresponds to the net moment corresponding to equilibrium state and mz is corresponding to non-equilibrium state because we have applied the magnetic field H along the Z direction. So magnetization along Z direction is considered here. So let us call this set of equations of net moment as equation number 5 and we need to know about the phenomenological equation which we have already seen in our previous class which was relating to dmz by dt. So we are having the equation of mz, we just need to differentiate mz with respect to t. So when we carry out differentiation, we get dmz by dt is equals to 1 by 2 as it is, g mu b as it is. The instantaneous populations are going to vary with respect to time. So we are just writing it as dn2 by dt minus dn1 by dt. And from equation number 3, we can write minus dn1 by dt is nothing but dn2 by dt itself. So 2 times of dn2 by dt, 2, 2 will get cancelled and also we have found out the solution for dn2 by dt from equation number 4 and just we have substituted it here. And if we simplify here further, so this tau term in the bracket is kept as it is. If we multiply 1 by 2 g mu b into the brackets, it is something like half 
g mu b n to minus n1 minus half g mu b small n to minus small n1. So making use of equation number 5 we know 1 by 2 g mu b into this term is m0 and the other term is mz. So finally we have got dmz by dt that is rise in magnetization due to the application of static field as 1 by tau 1 into m0 minus mz. So here we have considered this relaxation term as tau 1 where tau 1 is called as spin lattice relaxation time. And this equation is the equation which represents spin lattice relaxation. You can call it as equation number 6. And the same equation we have seen in our introduction class which explains about the build up magnetization that is when the magnetic field is applied along any direction let us say z direction with respect to time what happens within the system is explained using this formula. So this is a very important formula when we are dealing with spin lattice relaxation as the relaxation time involved here is spin lattice relaxation time itself. So we have defined here 1 by tau 1 is equals to 1 by tau 1 to plus 1 by tau 2 1. That is how we define tau 1. So this is relating to the derivation. But for more information we need to move to the concept of susceptibility which is a very important term in case of magnetism. And the relation corresponding to susceptibility with respect to spin lattice relaxation will be taken up in our next class. So this is it for today's class where we have dealt with the introduction part of the spin lattice relaxation as well as derived the phenomenological equation which involves tau 1 term that is spin lattice relaxation time. And in our next class we are going to deal with the relation between the susceptibility as well as spin lattice relaxation time as a function of frequencies. So also we are going to represent it graphically. Till then study well, stay tuned and thank you for watching.